Heather, can you comment on a couple of the uh, phase, randomized phase two and phase threes? Oh. Well, I, I think you know there, there are several different ideas that are coming out, as I'd mentioned earlier, with either the combination or the compared to chemotherapy. And I think um, it's exciting that we have so many different uh, attempts to look at those questions. You know, there's the first line versus chemotherapy. There's first line with chemotherapy. There's the second line versus chemotherapy. There are the combinations with the targeted drugs. And I think there's just so much that we need to understand, um, but a lot of excitement about it. And um, yeah, I, I actually went into oncology when I was uh, very interested at, at a college because of this idea of like, okay, we're gonna get the immune system to fight cancer. Um, college was a long time ago for me, so it's um, it's and very even longer for me. <laughs> we have the marks. So, but it, but it's really exciting to feel like we're finally there. We're finally on the the verge of of really being able to use the immune system to fight the cancer the way we all had hoped we'd be able to do for quite a while. But I think mm -hmm. there's there's still a lot of work to be done with figuring out the markers and figuring out the best way to sequence. Marks is not I mean, I hope you're right. I mean, I, I hope, you know, the history in lung cancer for positive phase three trials has been rather sobering mm -hmm. over the years. Um, you know, having said that, I, I think, you know, hats off to our tumor immunologists who have kind of figured out this whole uh, tumor biology as it relates to these new checkpoint inhibitors and so on and so forth. So, you know, again, we need to wait to, for the results of the phase three, see how they fit in. Is it going to be better than standard therapies? Mm -hmm. I think for most patients, this will be tolerable therapy. But as Mark Chris has said, you know, we're gonna have to relearn some of our internal medicine to manage some of these patients mm -hmm. because of the differing toxicities. It's right. not just, you know, neutropenia anymore. Um, so I, I, I think I'm optimistic but I'm also realistic. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. I think, you know, those of us who date back to the 80s and 90s when we were looking at interleukin and beta interferon and saw really astounding levels of toxicity with truly a modicum of activity, virtually no activity, I think uh, many of us were jaded by that experience. Mm -hmm. And this has certainly reinvigorated my hope that immunotherapy will have some benefit, but I share your healthy but skepticism no, as well. But I, th I think the drugs have proven themselves already as another option for our patients. Mm -hmm. I think there's no doubt about that. Um, what they're gonna replace, I don't know, but I think they're gonna be added to it. Uh, and, and I do think that time is gonna show that the, there is a way to select patients. That yeah. Remember, these do very specific things to the immune system and being able to identify those patients that have those abnormalities that are integral to the existence of their cancer and maintenance of their cancer, finding those people is gonna make a big difference. Right.